Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to Maker Quest. In this episode, I'm going to cover motors. I'll talk about the basic design principles, how they work, and show you how to make a super simple one at home. So, first of all, what is a motor? Well, basically, a motor converts electrical energy, like the energy that you get out of a battery, into mechanical energy or physical energy. Electric motors work on the Lorentz force principle, which basically is that a moving electric field generates a magnetic field, and a moving magnetic field generates an electric field. If you watched my last episode, you might recognize this motor, which is a motor that you can find in an electric toothbrush. All simple DC motors have the same basic parts. In this one, on the cap, you'll see that the leads are connected to two brushes, and those brushes, when you put it on the end of the motor, go around this rod in the middle, which is called the axle. And the axle is what actually spins on the motor, so that's where you get your rotational motion from. On the axle is a thicker part, which is called the commutator, and it's divided into three sections, which in turn correspond to the three wire coils on the inside. And those three wire coils are known as the rotor or the armature. So these act as electromagnets. If you look closely at the commutator, or if you might have caught what I mentioned before, there are three sections, and each of these sections is insulated from one another. So that means the brushes, as they stay still, as this rotates, the brushes lose contact with one section and make contact with the next section, which basically activates the next coil. So then the next coil is attracted to the magnet, and then the next coil, and the next coil, and so on. And so that's how you get the rotational motion. So that's a brushed DC motor. For our purposes, our educational purposes, let's stick to simple motors. And now I get to show you how to make a simple motor at home. All you need is a battery, a screw, or a nail is fine too, a strong rare earth magnet, also known as a neodymium magnet, and a piece of wire that's exposed on both ends. Oh, and also probably electrical tape so you don't burn yourself with the heat generated from the electric current. <laughs> as you can see, it's a very strong magnet. So I recommend attaching one end of the wire to the positive side of the battery because you can wrap the exposed end of the wire around the top of the battery. Stick a piece of electrical tape on top and it's all safe and ready to go. Then, the magnet did it for me, but connect the end of the screw, the head of the screw, to the magnet, which will magnetize the screw. And then that allows you to attach it to the negative side of the battery. And now take the other end of the wire and touch it to the side of the magnet. So there's a close-up. As you can see, it's moving. It's a little tricky to get actual useful work out of this, but it's a great learning experience and hey you just made your own motor at home with basically three pieces so heck yeah that's super awesome you might be asking yourself why did I touch the side of the magnet and not the bottom well what happens if I touch the bottom of the magnet <laughs> alright well if I touch the bottom of the magnet only nothing will happen Oh, there you go. Now you can see. So, it's not moving. It's getting hot, but it's not moving. Unlike that, which moves like crazy. So, I'll let you figure that out. Of course, if you are very curious and you can't figure it out, please let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about this particular issue. Why it doesn't work if the current is going up through the bottom of the magnet. Or any other questions that you might have about motors. So thank you for watching and please subscribe.